Okay, hello everybody. So I'm starting a new project here. Hopefully that uh, this will be something that you guys will be interested in. I've decided um, I wanted to try and do my own prototype project, 100% pretty much from my own, you know, copy and paste really, because you still are pretty much taking it from documents you've seen before. But uh, I just kind of wanted to put something together, and I kind of randomly ran across a tube that looked really intriguing. It's called the 6BM8. Uh, if you can see right here, this tube is a 6BM8, and this tube is a 6BM8, and then right here. We have an EF86. That is the preamp tube, uh, which is a small, uh, small pentode, audio pentode tube that is designed for you know preamps. Um, and then the 6BM8, uh, it has a triode and then a pentode, or uh, they may be beam tetrode. I'm not sure. Uh, I know the, the delineation is a little subtle, but at any rate, they both have the five um, you know total uh, components. They have a cathode, anode, and then three grids. Um, and so effectively what I wanted to do was build a bedroom amp. These guys output is about four watts each, I think it was, if I remember right. And so they put it output would probably be at max eight watts or so. So I wanted to be a, an amp that will have some pretty good character and tone without specifically being really loud. It's kind of a bedroom amp idea. So um, I've been playing with the prototype uh, idea here. I built this schematic out, and then we'll go into troubleshooting and whatnot. I, I actually have modified this already because I've been doing the prototype um, and playing with it. Um, but uh, it's not completely working yet. We're going to be covering all of that as we go, but effectively this is where it's at now, and it, and it seems to be somewhat working, uh, but there's some issues I'm still need to work out, but you'll watch the rest of the whole process in the video, some of which came from an earlier schematic, which I was a little wrong on. But uh, this is the current state of it. As you can see, really, it's just got a standard... Um, actually, this component is now wrong. I've had to make, change this to 1 meg, because, for whatever reason, this pentode... Um, the voltage at the pin here versus the pin here was weird. You normally supposed to have a higher voltage at the main anode and then this other positive grid, which would be grid 2, would usually be a little lower or the same. So this is why there's a 390K, but for some reason, even though I had a 390K, the this was running at about 80 volts and this was running at like 110. So I put a higher resistor here, which ended up being about a meg, just to try it out, and I think it was either a meg or 680K, I don't remember which one I did now, but I'll, I'll update the schematic once I know for sure. But this ended up putting it more balanced. Uh, I'm getting a nice solid signal output. I, I have temporarily pulled the tone stack out because I was having a lot of weirdness and I wanted to make sure that wasn't part of it. But this is kind of a standard, uh, I believe this was a standard uh, Fender one that I kind of pulled off of the base man uh, that I built recently, uh, tone stack. And then the volume I have here, but I've also tried it post and it seems almost a little better post, but it doesn't matter exactly as long as you have the volume somewhere. So I'll probably be ending up moving this more to the right side of this at some point as well. And I will have a final schematic at the end of this for anyone that might want to build it. I plan on building a layout as well so that uh, people can build this if they want. But uh, it's fairly light on components, fairly easy. Uh, I'm not doing any of this power section yet because I'm using a power supply that I have to test it out and, and, and trial it out. Uh, and you'll see some of that on the video as well. Um, but uh, effectively, these come in and head into the grids. We split that down with a one meg resistor to kind of, uh, you know, and then tie it down with a, a, a capacitor here into the second half because we're tying the cathodes together. This is kind of a little bit, if I remember, a little bit of local feedback where you'll get a little bit of the inverse signal, like a negative feedback. Uh, but you get the cathode follows over into this side of the triode and then sends it through. But this, because it's diminished quite a bit by this one meg resistor, ends up causing a little bit of a you know negative on that as well uh, because it feeds in the, the same positive signal, whereas this is the inverted signal that comes through into here for the phase inversion. Uh, so this is possibly part of where my balance problems are. We'll, we'll, I'm going to continue troubleshooting that in the future videos. You'll watch it, but effectively that the signal would then kind of bleed over into the inputs here. Uh, initially, I'd also forgotten to put these tie-down resistors. Uh, I, I didn't have 220K, which is what you'll see in a lot of amps. I don't know exactly what the best of, for those might be in this situation, but I had some 100K, so I just put them in series, so I have 200K there. You'll see this. It's quite a... A nice bodge, but it is a prototype. The idea would be effectively that once I get it working and sounding right, I would then make sure I have the schematic written down and then try and build one again from an actual turret board and everything. And we'll probably end up with a video for all of these parts of the process. Uh, the estimation that I've seen from a lot of reading was that it should these two tubes uh, on the output stage should be about 9K impedance. Uh, so I've got a transformer right now that's an old Vox one. Not old, it's a new Vox one I'm going to be building next. But the idea here was that it's normally a 4K uh, uh, transformer, uh, and so I've, you know, kind of doubling the impedance to 9K means that it doubles the output ohms that it would be on the other side. So I've hooked up the an 8 ohm speaker to the 4 ohm tap, and I'm, uh, you know, testing it out that way. Ultimately, so far, uh, you know, I've gotten sound out of it several times, but having a lot of the real bugs and glitches, and it's been kind of fun and, and uh, a brain bender trying to figure all of it out, but, uh, you know, 
please, if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Uh, any ideas that you have about why the schematic may not work, um, please do. Uh, keep me uh, in the loop and post your comments below. If you're interested in uh, following the video, please do subscribe, um, uh, like this video, and I'll have a, a whole you know playlist for this video series that's talking about this schematic. Now I'm also assuming in some ways this one may take a long time to finish. It's going to be a longer legendary, if you will, kind of process of me potentially taking months and months to finish. But uh, effectively, I will try and do my best to get this going, and I'll be keeping up some other videos in the meantime as well. But I do have a decent amount of video footage shot of my troubleshooting and, and first setup and first, uh, you know, actually building it and whatnot. All right, hello everybody. I'm just wanting to start off this little shindig now that you've had the video for the intro. To show off my prototyping board in a little bit of detail. This is, these are the two 6BM8 type uh, Russian clones. And then over here is a Tung Sol, I think it was Tung Sol Winged C EF86. As you can also see, this is the old Vox. Sorry, there's a lot of glare. Let me try and get into the focus range. This is the old Vox um, board that I have, but I'm going to use this for prototyping. If you can see right here, I drilled a hole to break through uh, on a lot of 12AX7 type tubes. You want to bind uh, pins 4 and 5 together. But I, you know, I'm doing some tubes that don't like that, so I figured I can just drill a hole through there to give myself a nice big separation, and I've tested these out. So that they do not have, you can see I've done it on all all of them. Uh, they do not have any continuity there, which is good. So that way, if I do need, for whatever reason, to prototype a 12AX7 type setup, I can still jumper between the two, but this way, for these tubes that use pins 4 and 5 at 6 volts, I don't want those connected. I'm going to have a separate line run to each one. So, and then I'm going to try and solder in, kind of in each situation. This one's empty, so you can see it a little bit better. You know, each of these pins, you can see, has some kind of a connector down a little bit lower that I can connect into, and then, you know, connect a, you know, a resistor or a wire or whatever I need to. So this will help me do some prototyping. And, and this is definitely, as I mentioned in the intro video, a, a test for me. It may not work. It may. We're going to find out. But uh, so the next steps are really going to be for me to start soldering in some wires into this guy and get it ready. So we'll show you that uh, next. Okay, so I'm kind of behind the camera here, but hopefully you can see. I'm going to point out a few things I've done here. So this is on the pinout. This is the grid three which I'm kind of bodging over and connecting into my ground, which has got a resistor in the cap right there, right? Um, which are then soldered in here, because for some reason on this one I noticed it doesn't have an actual pin-out tube like this one maybe over here does, for example, for that pin. But anyway, uh, I've got my heater wires brought into here, and then they run over. I'll show that in a minute, but what I've done here is I've just got two connectors here because I'm going to connect. I have a, a power supply that I'll be able to connect into the heaters that I'll hook into there. I also have my 100K right here. That's for the input power. I have up here, I have a 390K that's going to drop that power a little bit more for the uh, grid 2. And then my input, which will be this uh, this pin right here, I'm going to hook in a little bit later, obviously, but I'll set that up. So pin 1, or uh, the one tube 1 is done. And I'm going to move on to the other tubes as well. Now, one of the things I'm going to try and figure out is I have to do the uh, bypass caps coming off of that. So I might have to kind of do another bodge and like connect the bypass cap directly here, but I might also just run a straight wire over and then by connect the bypass cap right before the input grid. But anyway, this is all a bit of the bodge stuff because I'm just trying to get a prototype together that will hopefully end up making sense in the long run. So uh, a real one, I'll obviously build a, a real turret board, but this is just a way for me to be able to kind of solder things into place roughly, test it out, make sure it works, and then kind of pull them all back out and, and build an actual layout if it works. If not, I have to swap some things around. So it just gives me a good starting point. And we'll continue on. And thank you, everybody. We're going to have more to come in future videos, but uh, that's just a starting point. Keep your amps by us hot. Keep the jams coming.